Welcome back. This is the time for our divine service where we are going to be present in the presence of God. May we prayerfully enter into this divine service. At this time, Praise Life will be conducted by Lowry Team Bangalore. Uh, once again, I wish to welcome each one of you uh, for this divine hour and uh, a very ha happy Sabbath uh, from Lowry uh, to everybody who are online and everybody who are joined through this Zoom link. And uh, as we begin, uh, let us sing Trust and Obey 590 from the SDA hymnal, Trust and Obey. Then we walk with the light of His Word, but a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, one with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise. Not a cloud in the sky, but a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sign or a fear, and while we trust and obey, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. <clears throat> if all ships we, we will see that it's free, or we'll walk by His side in the way. The other things we will do, where he sends we will go, here feel and we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. For the next song, we'll sing I Must Tell Jesus 485 from the hymn book 485 I Must Tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In all my distress, He will help me. He ever loves me, cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. Must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. 
If I but ask him, he will deliver. And in my grief, with, he will remain. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. In pain and trial, I need great Savior, who I know can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, He hold my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, what a world to evil allows me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, evil and able. Oh, the world's the victory won. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear thy burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Thank you all for joining us in the praise and word. At this time, the welcome and scripture reading will be brought to us by Gayatri Samson. Gayatri. Good morning and happy Sabbath church as well as the online viewer. I like to read your Bible verse. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21, it goes like this. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. So with this thought, with this verse, I'd like to welcome you all for this divine hour. Welcome again. This week, we are so glad to have Dr. Sam Rex Nyanuraj to present the divine service message to us. Dr. Sam practices medicine at CMC Vellore, India, and he will be introduced by Mrs. Jyoti Kennedy Chris Christian, who, uh, she is the sister of um, Mr. Anand, and she arranges the program for every second week of the month, which is focused on health. We also thank the team from Lovely Memorial College, located in Bangalore, India, for taking part. Every second week of the month is focused on health matters. And here is a quote which says, it's not about being the best, it's about being better than you were yesterday. In fact, I take a series of uh, messages every week and this week focuses on health matter. You can check it out on YouTube. Prophecy Live is every Saturday at 3 p.m. and Sunday at 9 a.m. There is also a YouTube video on youtube.com, Prophecy Live. You can check it out on prophecylive.org for more details. We also have midweek prayer every Wednesday at 7.30 and Friday Vespers at 8 p.m. You can get the Zoom links on our website, hopeside.org. I lead out the women's Bible study, which is only on Zoom every Saturday at 4 p.m. All the women are welcome to join in our Bible study. The details for the Zoom meeting is also found on the website, hopeside.org. We have prayer fasting every Tuesday from 6 a.m. 
to 6 p.m. And those who want to join in whatever way you'd like to fast, you can. And this fasting and prayer, especially for our building project, a community center and our church building project. And please keep us in your prayer as we fast and pray for this project to be successful. You're all welcome for a lunch on after the divine service. You can come to this church anytime and have lunch with us and fellowship with us. Okay, so we will have the opening song now by Lowry College Team. <coughs> the nurses we just celebrated nurses day and uh, the challenges we face every day at a job may God give us uh, wisdom knowledge understanding and health as we have dedicated ourselves to serve him thank you Mary Mary request for prayers for the nurses as they dedicate their lives for God and for the service of mankind I have I have prayer requests also. Hello? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Is this... You can tell your name and then go on. My name is Lalita. I want to pray for life and um, opportunities. But please pray for my back. It's hurting a lot. Thank you. Yes, we will pray for Lalita Auntie. Nathaniel has a prayer request. He is requesting for prayers for mothers. Since we celebrated Mother's Day, he wants prayers for all mothers. Any other prayer request? Praise. 
uh, pray for Sujit Chinta, uh, that is the relative of Pansy Chinta, who is a member and a faithful supporter, and she is arranging all the various programs week after week. So Sujit Chinta, who graduated uh, with engineering, has cancer that is spreading now. It is very sad that a young person is experiencing this. So please, please uh, pray for Sujit Chinta. Please continue to pray. Uh, not only now, but uh, please remember him so that he can be healed. Nothing is impossible for God, but sometimes when these things happen, we have no other recourse except God who can heal us. And so, please remember him. Yes, we'll pray for Sujit Chinta. Do you have any prayer request? Well, um, I request Kevin Samuel to offer the intercessory prayer right now. Almost Jesus lying Father in heaven. We thank you for this day, dear Jesus, that have given us the privilege to seek thy presence once again, dear Lord. As we gather here in this prayer, uh, as we gather here for this uh, in the Sabbath morning, Lord, uh, please be with us and guide us, O Lord. And thank you for the privilege and thank you for the opportunity that, that you've given us, O Lord. Thank you for the food, shelter, clothing that you've given to us and provided, provided us till this day, dear Jesus. How great the word, dear Jesus that thou hast, thou hast created this universe, O oh Lord, the things which you have created when we see, O oh Lord, it just makes us to marvel, O oh Lord, and the things which we, which you have created when we see, it is just beyond our imagination, and it's just be, beyond our wisdom, O oh Lord. As uh, we have gathered here uh, for this uh, program, uh, for this uh, Sabbath program, O oh Lord, please be, please be with each and every one of them who's attending uh, the Sabbath uh, uh, service, O oh Lord. And especially pray for the persons who have uh, come here with the prayer request. Please be with them and guide them, O Lord. Please bless them and guide them. And I pray for the persons who are not able to play, uh, to tell the prayer request, O Lord. Please be with them also, Lord. Just them and heal them whatever uh, problems they are facing. Please be with them and guide them, O Lord. And I pray and uh, especially pray for uh, um, uh, the person Mary, O Lord. Please be with them and guide them. Uh, please be, be with her and guide her, O Lord. As her prayer request is about all the nurses who are submitted their life for the medical ministry, please be with them and guide them. Please give them good of wisdom, give them wisdom, knowledge from the above, and uh, bless them with good health and immunity power, O oh Lord. So wherever they go, whatever they do, when they do the, uh, the work uh, for you, dear Jesus, please be with them and guide them. Give them good of wisdom, O oh Lord. Give them wisdom, knowledge, bless their families, bless, bless them and guide them, O oh God. And I especially pray for... Uh, uh, Lalita, uh, the person, Lalita, dear Jesus, please be with them, uh, be with her and guide her, O Lord, as she is suffering from back pain, please touch her and heal her, O Lord. Uh, as uh, for you, dear Jesus, nothing is impossible uh, with you, dear Jesus. You can do what, whatever, what, what, anything in this world, dear Jesus. Please do a miracle in her life so she she would uh, she would not suffer from that back pain, so she will be healed and uh, glorify the name by telling others that you have healed her, O Lord. And uh, once again, I submit uh, Su Sujit, Sujit, uh, the ma'am Sujitra, dear Jesus, please be with her and guide her. As, as is in this young age, she's uh, suffering from cancer, O Lord. Please be with her and guide her. Um, please be with her and guide her, so, uh, guide her, Lord. So this disease won't spread uh, in her body, so she will be healed soon and she will glorify the name of Lord. Please bless her and guide her. And especially pray for this, uh, ch uh, this church, dear Jesus, for the construction. Please be with her. Please be with them and guide them so the funds be raised so soon the church will be uh, be built and the people will gather there and glorify the name of the Lord. Once again, I submit all the requests which uh, which they are not able to tell and the request which I missed a lot. Please be with all the persons, O Lord. Please be with the persons who are weary and the persons uh, who are not able to attend the uh, Sabbath service uh, and so many problems which just uh, uh, not. Uh, not giving them the opportunity to worship the name of Lord. Please be with all those people and just uh, change the situations in, the, in their homes, O oh Lord. So they will just see you and glorify the name and know that you are the real creator of them and the, let them know that you are the real creator and glorify the name of oh Lord. I submit each and every one of them who are 
uh, making their and upholding each and one of the things uh, to make this uh, Sabbath service uh, happen a lot. Please be with them and guide them. Please each and one of them. Please each and one of the families uh, who are attending the Sabbath service. Please each and one of them. Lord, as if you must in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Kevin Samuel. May God answer all our prayers. This is the time for the offertory. As Christians, you, you would all agree to the statement I'm about to read now. Even if you pay off every debt, build a fully funded emergency fund, invest wisely for retirement, Save for children's college and pay off your house early. You would still be missing the most important personal finance prin financial principle, which is giving. But just agreeing to the statement is not enough. We should be a zealous giver. So let me tell you a short story. The man who gave 90%, 90% of his earning, R. G. Lee Tony. He lived from 1888 to 1969. He was a Christian industrialist. And he had uh, designed and developed several earth-moving equipment. So this person, Lee Tone, he has over 300 inventions. And he also had several patents throughout his lifetime. He succeeded financially and he increased his giving. And in the end of his uh, career, he almost gave, he gave 90% of his uh, income. So you may say, I would give 90% too if I was a multi-billionaire. But then this person, he gave, he started giving when he had nothing. And God blessed him more. And in his words, he said, I shovel out the money and God shovels it back. But God has a bigger shovel. So God will bless us more when we give more. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, you are a provider, uh, the giver of all the things that we have in our lives. Even though we are not worthy of the blessings, Oh Lord, you have given us more than we deserve. At this time, help us to have the spirit of giving. As we have heard the story, Oh Father, help us to be like him, where we can give 20%, 30%, or 90% of our income for the glory of God and to hasten your coming to get your work done in this world. Help us to have a spirit of giving so that we can give so that we will receive more. Keep us safe in your arms. As we collect the offering, may this money be used for your service. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The special song will be brought to us by Dr. Blessy Sini. Dr. Blessy. Oh, 
a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. Isn't this the place we all want to go to? To a place nearer to the heart of God, to be with God. Even now at this time, we are not able to go up to heaven. But then still, we can be close to the heart of God through our prayers, meditation and worship. Isn't this the reason we are all here on this Sabbath day? To be near to the heart of God. So let's all join our voices to sing the song. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin can never molest near to the heart of God. Let's join our voices praising God's name. will be introduced by Mrs. Jyoti Christian. Hello, good morning. Uh, it's always a joy to connect with Hopeside Church and thank you for the privilege. The speaker for the hour is none other than Dr. Sam Rex Nyanaraj. He was born and raised in Tamil Nadu, India, had his formal schooling also over there. And he graduated from Christian Medical College, Bellor with MBBS degree. And after which he served in various hospitals in India. My short acquaintance with him would reveal to you that he's a man indeed of few words, great deeds, humble, down-to-earth person. Currently, he is pursuing his postgraduate course in respiratory medicine at the same college, Christian Medical College, Bellor. And during his 
service at Dr. Palam, I had a little bit of closer association with Dr. Sam. And I found out that he indeed is a man of God. When I asked him, can you please give me, share a little more content to introduce you? He said, it's better that you don't introduce me at all. So it tells you that he believes in gospel on shoes. Not much to talk about himself other than to say, indeed, a servant of God and a friend to many. His interests are varied. He, is, uh, he takes a keen interest in the youth and the saving of souls. And his passion is, along with his medical services, also serves the people to bring them to the foot of the cross. Dr. Sam, it's a pleasure to hear God's word from the throne of grace. We invite you and thank you for consenting to share God's word, the health message with Hopeside audience today. Hello, happy Sabbath church. Uh, am I audible? Yes, we can hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the kind words, Shanti. I wish, uh, I wish that were actually true what you, whatever you said. Uh, then I like, have some record to stand before heaven. But yeah, I hope I'm working towards that. Hope God will make all of us also worthy of of the name of Jesus, so we can uh, of the sacrifice that is he has bestowed on us. For a message today on uh, on a health topic, I have chosen the topic of Mary Heart. I would like to like all of you to turn your Bibles to the book of First uh, Samuel chapter twenty five. First Samuel chapter twenty five is a short story about a man called Nabal. He was living in the time of David. King David was on the run from King Saul. King David has not become a king yet, but he has been anointed already, and he is on the run from Saul. Saul is seeking his life to take it. And David spent a few a few months, maybe maybe a couple of years in the in the wilderness of Judah. And right by that side there was a hill. Uh, we all know this Mount Carmel. And there was a rich man over there. He was one of the descendants of Caleb, a very rich man, thousands of sheep. And David and his men, they were right there by him by the shepherds of Nabal and they were taking care of him, taking care of the shepherds, taking care of the sheep. Those days there were lots of danger, lots of harm which can happen. There may be people who, uh, crowds of people who come to pillage and raid and if they are not well protected, they can take away your sheep and no one can stand up and ask them. They have power, they have might, they have weapons. You really can't fight with them. But the presence of David and his 600 men over there was a, like a wall of fire, as David later says. And so this has been happening for a few months and it's time for sheep sharing. Sheep sharing was a great event, a very grand festival because all the, all the wool that they get from sharing the sheep and is a great source of income. It's probably the, the main source of income for a shepherd those days. Enable having thousands of sheep, uh, this was a huge uh, income for him, and everybody's looking forward to that. That's a time of feasting, of joy, of merriment. And Nabal was having a feast in his house when David sends his men to Nabal. He asked them to request for a short for sharing his joy with them. Also, David has been homeless. David is not a homeless guy. He uh, belongs to Bethlehem. But he is driven from his house. He is unable to go back to his home because Saul is on the lookout for him. And here David wants to, is longing for, and he and his men are living away from home, away from the pleasures of the common man, away from peace and merriment. And here they, they have someone whom they've been taking care of for the last few months. And they wished that they would get something in return for taking care of them for so long. And so David sends his servants, but Nabal was not happy with that. Probably many reasons were involved. Probably Nabal thought, 
if he had helped david and saul comes to know about it then he will have to answer saul is not an ordinary person he is a king and and around that time before that he had already slain an entire city of priests because they had helped david and these are all scary things for a normal person and and here he decided to not to give not to help david and he sends back saying who is david that i should do anything to him when david hears this he gets angry and uh, and he goes to fight against nabal but god prevents david he uh, helped uh, help david come to his senses by means of sending nabal's wife abigail the very beautiful and a very reasonable woman who speaks david back into his senses after this happened or uh, david uh, goes david goes back david doesn't vows not to fight against nabal he vows to give his vengeance to god's hand and this was this how the bible records it the first samuel chapter 25 verses 37 and 38 what happens to nabal abigail goes back to the house and nabal was feasting like a king and the next morning abigail tells nabal when he wakes up out of his drunkenness that so and so what all happened that david had come to kill everybody in the household and uh, he was a piece somehow and he had gone back when nabal heard that the bible describes it like this it says he died in his heart and that is that is very interesting how the bible puts it it says nabal died in his heart and he became like a stone it was 10 days later not till 10 days later that Dave Nabal actually dies he actually expires gives up his spirit and he's buried but 10 days before something something else happened which was he died in his heart the bible says the scripture reading which we did for today it says a merry heart does good like a medicine it is possible to die in your heart it is possible to die in your heart it is possible to be discouraged to lose hope to lose everything that you hold dear it is possible to live as dead beings be living corpses not alive really just existing there is a there is a famous quote saying to live is the rarest thing most people just exist and yeah that can be because of many reasons but here the bible talks about a, a very important cause of of disease he says when you your heart is discouraged when you're not cheerful in your heart that leads to disease and it goes on to say the antidote in fact the medicine for a disease is is what again is a cheerful heart is a cheerful spirit if you keep your spirits up if you engage yourself engage your mind to think of good things if you be happy in your heart the bible says that itself is a medicine that itself is a medicine many people many of us when we get sick we go to the doctor and we and we seek medicines we want to get the best medicines uh, many many patients come to me and ask doctor give me good medicine give me best medicine to for the cough give me best medicine for the breathing difficulty same thing with us we want the best medicine the bible suggests to us one says be happy always be cheerful paul says rejoice in the lord all the time and he says again i say to you rejoice you see there is there can be no greater emphasis on this bible is very clear be happy rejoice and and it tells us how to rejoice not not just like that not be happy in pleasuring and partying that's not what the bible is saying it says rejoice in the lord so you're going to see how we can do that Here's an interesting quote I want to read for you from Spirit of Prophecy. It says, "Sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Nine tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have their foundation here. How many? How many? Nine tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have their foundation in the mind. How interesting is that? Imagine." think of 10 people who are sick in your mind right now 10 people you know who are sick and and according to this according to the spirit of prophecy around 9 of them almost 9 of them are because 
of what happened in the mind first. And that translated into what is happening in the body. You can say, no, these are real physical, these are real physical illnesses. These are real physical illnesses. We have to treat. Yes, I'm not, I'm not denying that. The diseases are real and real diseases are caused from the mind. The mind is connected to the whole body and that and that is where the, the governing force of the human body stays. The will, the higher the, and the lower power, the appetite, the passion, the reason, the will, everything is, is there in your mind. And when it is not balanced properly, when you are when you let go the reins of your heart and it's not properly controlled, everything goes haywire. The body reacts to it by forming diseases. And according to Spirit of Prophecy, it's very interesting that out of 10 diseases, 9 are caused by, by the mind. How many times yourself have felt that something bad happened to you and you're feeling discouraged and you felt sick the next day? Or something, you were de depressed about something or some you have lost your loved one and then you and then people started falling sick. Many times when we take history from our patients, if we go deep into history, you ask how many days you have been having this problem. And they say you've been having for the last five years, doctor. And you talk to them, ask them what happened five years ago. Many of them have a story to tell. And interestingly, for many of them, it's something to do with losing a loved one, something to do with failing in something being discouraged, something to do with the mind. Yes, our genes, they predispose us to diseases. They are responsible for most of the diseases man suffer because of what we inherited from our parents. But if your mind is not kept, kept well, those diseases can be accelerated. At the same time, if you are training your mind to do well, to be cheerful, to be rejoicing in the Lord always, then these diseases can be slow down can even be arrested in many cases. Many times patients have uncontrolled diseases. Diabetes, despite taking all medicines, despite taking the best of medicines, despite taking the maximum doses, sugars are not controlled. And, and if you go deeper into why it is, you can find out that they have problems in their mind. They are always worrying about something. They are anxious. They are, they are worried. You see, God wants us to stop that. And in Jesus' life, when he was on earth, he was telling so many things towards this. Many of his parables were aimed at common people who didn't have resources for their next meal. Right? And they have to earn every day to provide for their families. And they don't they have uncertain futures. And God was continuously, Jesus reminded them of the Father's tender loving care. He kept telling them, Why are you worried for this and that? Don't you see the field? Don't you see the flowers? Don't you see the birds? How they are singing? How they are not worried? And do they go hungry? Does not God feed them? Do they die because they don't have food? Can you, can't you see the grass being clothed? Can't you see the flowers being painted? How much more God loves you? How much more he will take care of you? You see, Jesus, when he came to this earth, he was addressing the issues of the mind. Jesus was a doctor in every sense. He healed people of the physical illnesses. But more than that, he spoke to the mind. Many people got healed in Jesus because their minds got healed first. We see the story of the, the man struck with palsy. He was a big sinner. He had wasted his life. And, at the end, and as a result, he got this disease. And the disease had wasted him. And he went to many doctors, no cure. And finally, his friends bring him to Jesus. We know the story. They make a hole in the roof and they drop this man down from the roof. Jesus looks at him and he says, son, be cheerful. Did you see that? Did you see that? The foundation to healings comes from the heart, comes from a merry heart. Jesus addresses the first problem there. This man got the disease. You know why? Because of the guilt in his heart. This guilt was not leaving him. It was pressing on him more and more and more and it crippled him for life. How many of us today have diseases which which are crippling us and we are seeking medicines we are trying to cure it with this drug and that drug we are trying to see what look to meditation do that. so many things but but we are missing out what the bible the basic teaching of the bible you know, says be of a good good cheer god calls us to rejoice 
And he says, when you rejoice, your your heart, your disease can heal. And and then later he proceeds to heal that heal that patient. The religion of Christ. I'm reading from Spirit of Prophecy again. So far from being the cause of insanity, is one of its most effectual remedies. Did you, did you hear that? The religion of Christ is the most effective remedy of the mind. It is a potent soother of the nerves. Again, what is the religion of Christ? It is the word of God. It is prayer. When you read the Bible, when you spend time with the Bible, that is the medicine. The Bible says in, uh, in Psalm, there's a beautiful verse. It says, he sent his word and healed them. See, many times we think we need to take medicines to be healed. But God says more than that, God's word is more potent to heal us. Is another quote here. In nine cases out of ten, the knowledge of a sin-pardoning savior would make them better both in mind and body. Nine out of ten. Nine, that is 90% of patients who come to hospital are just diseased in their mind and is just showing up in their body. Just think about the implications of that and what that would mean for mean for maybe you also and someone who's who's suffering in your body. Is like only 10% of the diseases are actually, you know, is, is beyond your control. The 90% of the diseases that people suffer, if you just train your mind to be cheerful, you can just defeat it. What a promise that is. What a promise that is. And God wants us to know how to do it. And that's what we're going to see today. We're going to see the way to heal, uh, heal our diseases, to grow close to God. Here's a quote from, uh, from Bible commentary. Uh, life giving fruit hours to Christ. The fruit of the tree of life in the garden of Eden possessed supernatural virtue. So God created this world. God created so many things in this world. And then he makes a garden for human beings. And in that garden, the center of the garden, he places a tree. And that tree is called the tree of life. This tree is not an ordinary tree. If you actually think about it, this seems to be defying all logic. To eat from the tree means you will live forever. And that power seems to be independent of God himself. Just, just, just think about it. We all know that life comes, comes from God, right? life comes from God. Jesus said, John begins like this, in him was life and that life was the light of men. It's life from God that flows to all of us. But here Adam and Eve have sinned and they are now deserving of death. All right, God does not build for them to live forever in their sinful state. But even in that state, if they could take a fruit from the tree of life and eat and as a result of that, live forever. Just imagine, God doesn't want man to live forever, but you just go and take a, take a fruit and eat and, and you can live. And that's the reason that God gives to say that we should stop man from taking of the fruit of this tree. It seems as if God endowed this tree with such a supernatural power beyond anything else. This was, in, in fact, if you read Spirit of Prophecy, this tree of life is Christ himself. It's, it's the type of Christ. Christ is the antitype. This tree is the type of Christ. So, you see, that tree had life-giving power in itself. In itself. That God had to stop man from eating it. It's not that let him eat it. It doesn't matter because I don't will him to live. God didn't say that. God said I should stop him from eating because eating of it means eternal life. I'm, I'm continuing to read from Spirit of Prophecy. Its fruit was the antidote of death. Did you see that? The fruit from the tree of life is antidote to death itself. For a long time, man has been in search of elixir, elixir of life. And what does it do? It is supposed to give you eternal life. It's something that philosophers and, and, and researchers and travelers from over the world have been searching and they knew that something like that exists and, and according to Bible it does it does exist 
that antidote is the tree of life is is the fruit from the tree of life imagine the chemicals the the components the molecules are found there which can which can prevent death itself whatever disease you have no matter how big it is it may be cancer it may be aids it may be anything all the incurable diseases you can think of this fruit is the antidote of anything in fact jesus when he came down to earth is just distributing the tree of life he himself is the tree of life and he's just making people eat of him he said i am the bread of life i come down from heaven if you eat of me you will live forever did he say that you see the leaves of the tree of life are for sustaining of life and immortality it goes on to write through man's disobedience death entered the world adam ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil the fruit of which he had been forbidden to touch his transgression opened the floodgates of o upon our race after the entrance of sin the heavenly husbandman transplanted the tree of life to the paradise above god did not leave the tree of life in earth we know of this we know of this from other writings from from other commentators the tree of life god placed flaming swords around it that protected and prevented anyone from going into the garden itself all right but later before the flood came god took the entire tree entire garden of eden and he transplanted it to heaven and 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 the entire garden is there in heaven the tree of life is there in heaven right now but see what it says he transplanted the tree of life to the paradise above but its branches hang over the wall to the lower world do you see that he is not left us he is not cut off cut, cut us off from eternal life he is letting the branches hang down lower 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 to reach our earth and through the redemption purchased by the blood of christ we may still eat of its life giving fruit when we talk about jesus gives life when we talk about eating jesus jesus is the tree of life eating him gives us life when we talk about eating jesus we are not talking about physically eating flesh and drinking blood right we are talking about a spiritual component here we are talking about being blessed with the presence of jesus we are talking about ingesting his principles and living his life on this earth and bible calls that itself as life living a holy life living a life which is reconciled to god living a life where we are in harmony with god takes away all the conflicts in our mind and gives the greatest peace that our mind can ever know and that itself is healing to the body will uh jesus said this in now uh, the, the beatitudes he says blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and i i would like to ask you a question today why are those who mourn are the only ones comforted why god doesn't comfort everyone why does god comfort only those who are crying why do you need to weep to have that peace from god that passes all understanding jesus said before he left this earth i give it to you my peace and this peace is something beyond what the world can understand jesus goes on and talk about it in the world you will have tribulation jesus says be of good cheer be happy the same word again be of a cheerful heart because i have overcome the world you see the the joy the peace that comes from god that comes from jesus is not dependent on your circumstances is not dependent on your genes is not dependent on what you have been going through in your life or what you have gone through it is independent of all of that the life that jesus gives is is free and it's independent of whatever is happening around you and this peace is something that the world cannot explain and this peace if it comes to your mind it calms your soul it soothes your nerve it brings your mind to a state of state of cheerfulness of peace with god that your whole body can feel its effect you may be going through a disease you may be experiencing something but your mind if it's healed you know what will happen it will translate to healing of your body your body healing will follow the healing of the mind in 9 out of 10 cases that's the case is because your mind is diseased that your body is showing symptoms if your mind is healed your body will follow suit 
how how great is that and and jesus goes on to say jesus says you have to mourn to be comforted the comfort that god gives the peace that this god gives is not for everyone is only for those who are crying who are weeping and who are mourning how interesting is that how interesting is that if you're not crying if you're not weeping you have not you're not going to appreciate the peace that you will receive later you can only appreciate the peace of god the joy that he gives the cheerful heart that he gives if you would you know what it means to cry you know what it means to mourn and here in the bible we see so many stories story after story of people who have gone through trouble who have wept and who got the answers from god imagine you are in the boat with jesus all right you are say one of the disciples and you you are in the boat with all the other disciples and you are you're following jesus and jesus says teaching is telling a parable and you're all and and, and say this the sea is very calm and quiet and you're looking to go to the other side and meet more people and spread the kingdom of god you are so happy you are so thrilled in your heart you are so at peace all right imagine the peace you would feel in this situation now now imagine another scenario where where you are in the boat with the disciples and jesus is sleeping and then what came a huge storm came out of nowhere and here they are struggling for their lives they are throwing the water out they are they are screaming they are shouting they are they don't know what to do they are all around pressed by sorrow and trouble they think their life is going to end that is the agony that they are going through and then we all know what happened jesus wakes up from his sleep and with a word with his mighty word he calms down the sea the storm the wind everything obeys and and it's, it's quiet imagine the peace you would have then now if i would ask you to compare the peace on the first scenario and the peace in the second scenario what would be better what would be greater which peace would you seek for which one is is greater peace than the other without a doubt the peace that comes after a storm the peace that comes after crying the peace that comes after a trouble is the greater peace than the peace that always exists that peace that always fills your heart yes that is great but then the peace that we feel after a storm is something that you need to feel if you don't if you have not gone through it then you, then you don't know it you see that's that's how that's what separates us from the angels in heaven right when we go to heaven angels are going to ask us explain to me what happened how did you feel how did you feel when this happened in your life how do you feel when that happened in your life why because they have not gone through it they are always in the presence of god they are always filled with peace from heaven they don't lack any joyfulness they don't lack any cheerfulness but here's what they wouldn't know the peace that comes after a storm and it is your privilege and mine today to experience that peace that special peace and jesus says blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted we're going to see the story of one bible character who had exemplified such great faith such in such adversity in such disparity she pushed herself and she wept and she got comforted and we're going to see the story and close our message for today the story of no one else but mary magdalene we all know the story of mary magdalene and how she was one of the strongest disciples of jesus if you would ask me if you would ask me to name one person who loved jesus the most when he was on earth i would without a doubt without blinking tell it's mary magdalene they were the disciples of jesus who really loved him who were close with him who who were spent all their time with him and they could do so because they were men around men around jesus and it was not it was not looked down upon it was acceptable it was ev- everything was okay for it but even more than what they all had you no know, mary magdalene may not have spent as much time as the other disciples of jesus she may not have done as much work for jesus as the other disciples but she definitely had a love that surpassed all the disciples at least at least at some point in their lives at least at, at the point that she 
exhibited the greatest love for Jesus, no one else could even come close. And everyone else was thinking about who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And everyone, everyone is only concerned about their position. Everyone was worried that Jesus is going to die and leave them, leave them without a position. Here is Mary Magdalene who, who spends all that she had. She goes and pours it out on Jesus. In a minute, in a minute, she spent the savings of a lifetime. And she felt it was worth it. When everybody else felt it was a waste of money, for her, it was worth every bit of it. See, that, that, that is the contrast we are talking about here. When Jesus resurrected, Jesus resurrected, it was Mary Magdalene who went to see, who went out of everything to see Jesus. When there were so many brave men sitting there, they were all locked up in the upper room. They were weeping, they were crying. And, he, and it was a woman right there who, was, who got the other woman up to go and meet Jesus. That is how much Mary Magdalene loved Jesus. And we know that how much ever you love Jesus, that gets reciprocated, right? Yes, God loves all of us infinitely. But, to, but how much love we receive from Jesus, how much of it is expressed from God to us, depends on how much we respond to that love, doesn't it? And, and here is the person who responded the most to the love of Jesus, the most to the love of Jesus, because she also received much according to Jesus. And, and, and Jesus loved her man the most also. From, uh, it, it, we see that in the story of the resurrection. Go to, uh, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 28. And here's talking about, uh, talking about Mary Magdalene. Early in the morning. And we're going we're gonna to look at her life and see what is the secret to being comforted. What's the secret to get this peace from God that passes all understanding and thus be healed of the diseases in our body. The secret to that is weeping, friends. Nothing more, nothing more, nothing less. It's as simple as that. It's weeping. But it's not just weeping. You see, all the disciples were weeping. All the other women were weeping. But they were all weeping in the upper room. Are you getting me? Here is Mary Magdalene. The difference, the only difference between Mary Magdalene and the others was that Mary was weeping by the tomb, by the grave of Jesus. All the others are weeping in their comfort zone. Many times we get our problems and we cry for it. Of course, all of us cry. But we are not comforted. We are not comforted with the comfort that is promised of heaven. You know why? Because we are not weeping in the presence of God. God wants us to go and weep before him. When we weep on our own, when we look at troubles, when we look at trials, we make a habit to think about it. We enlarge it. We make it bigger than what it should be. And we keep meditating on it, thinking on it, making it bigger and bigger and bigger till it gives some disease to us. God doesn't want that to be. You know, God wants you to go and weep before him and leave it at his presence. When you come out, he says, I will give you my peace and you come out cheerful. You see that? Many times, many times, we disease our own bodies by thinking of how others blighted us. We, we disease our own bodies by thinking about how other people do not respect us as they should. Other people do not value us as they should. We feel wrong. We feel we are being so unfairly treated by this world and we want to change all that and we keep thinking on these things as if that is going to save us. We, we make them our savior by meditating on it, giving all our thought and attention to it. And as a result, we become sick. You know what God wants us to do? God wants us to leave all these worries before him. When you go to him, go weep before him. And when you come out, take something better from God. Think, take his life. When you come out from God's presence, Take the life of Jesus and meditate on him. When you feel wronged, think about what, how people wronged Jesus. How you wronged Jesus when he was on earth. How you made his life unfair. How you made him, made him weep at every step. How you made his life difficult. Yes, we have to think about that. And then we will see the beauty of Jesus' love passing through everything. And we will know that. You see, this kind of, this kind of love in itself is medicine. Thinking about this kind of love itself is therapeutic. 
it will heal you of all the diseases in your mind of most diseases even even if the mind is even if the disease is not from your mind it will at least reduce the intensity of it it will definitely do that and and that will be done only when you weep in the presence of god in fact in fact when mary was weeping before uh, weeping before the grave the angels come and and they tell her why are you weeping here jesus is not here i want you all to notice that you see mary was 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 in the wrong place she was not in the right place friends she was not weeping she was she thought she was weeping in the presence of god sincerely she thought it was so but she was not jesus is risen he is not in the grave the angels are trying to tell mary why are you still here go back tell the disciples no jesus is not here but jesus and 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 when G- and the angel said it everyone left peter and john they come they see the grave is empty they go back all the other women come they see the grave and it's empty and they go back to tell the others but you know who stayed back mary stayed back and that is when she got the perfect peace you see others got their peace also but that was delayed but mary's peace was perfect and complete because she stayed there she stayed there till she got an answer how many of us do this how many of you how many of you stay in the presence of god till you find your answer till you till god forgives you of your sins he, the greatest the greatest activator of disease in our body is the guilt that you have in your mind and jesus says i will take away that guilt from your heart i will do it now i will heal you you know if you're not even feeling that guilt then something is really wrong with us we need to go stay in the presence of god till we feel that guilt and once we feel that god will god will heal us you see many of us we we, we don't even feel the need to mourn we don't have anything to mourn for why do i have to mourn that's that's the question we have but that is not what the bible teaches the bible teaches for you to be comforted you need to mourn if you feel i don't have anything to mourn then something is wrong right there we are sinners friends we are in need of a savior we are desperately lost we are wicked we are hopeless people we are wicked from our roots up even the best thing in your life that you have done to others if you think if if you break down the motives it is selfishness at the end without jesus we are so lost and and we need to weep and ask jesus to come and change us and jesus jesus has promised to do that if we weep and mourn in his presence and and that is the greatest remedy that heaven is is can give us greater than any medicine greater than any medicine that your doctor can give in fact uh, in fact we we have evidence based medicine medicine is changing a lot those days those days when patients felt felt sick doctor tried giving so many medicines and say some of it worked some of it didn't work and whatever work they tried giving for other patients and uh, say it and and then it became an anecdotal stuff you you get what i'm trying to say something like something like each each physician had their own practice all right someone would give one drug at this dose someone would give at another dose someone would not even give the drug and i would say you know this works for me and so i give that is how medicine used to be but these days it is taking a big a paradigm shift medicine is changing towards evidence based and here we look at everything we analyze everything with evidence we see we see for patients with uh, with interstitial lung disease how much does this drug help does it really help does steroid help immunosuppression does it help and and here we look at uh, we look at the evidence we look at large trials where thousands of patients are enrolled and you see the evidence you know you know what at the end of it do you know what most medicines that you get from your doctor have very less evidence very very less evidence if you actually come into the field you will see that most of the time in fact in fact uh, someone has said this say the duty of the doctor the work that doctor does the physician does is just is just entertain the patient till nature does its own cure you got a disease you go to the doctor you go to the physician and they just give you some drugs which keeps you entertained you feel like you're getting something 
and by the time nature itself is working inside and is making the all the repetitive changes and by the end of say few few days few weeks or whatever your disease was by the end of that time you are healed and you feel the medicine that did that magic for you in fact it, it is not most of the medicine most of the sicknesses that you see in this world today are don't have medicines is just you just support to support the patient you just help the patient get through the difficult time and then and then the body itself will take care of the rest that's what we do most of the time and and deep down any medicine even the strongest medicines okay which have proven which have a proven efficacy have have like very they they the evidence for even the greatest medicines is just is not great is is really not great if you look at the percentages if you look at the statistics it is very very limited that's that's how much it is i'm i'm trying to highlight i'm trying to reiterate the point that we give so much of importance to medicines to drugs and things and we feel these can heal us when god has given us the greatest medicine of all and he says that is a cheerful heart your heart needs to be cheerful your heart needs to meditate on something greater than itself not on the things that others have done to you not on the things that not on not on your failures not on your discouragements not on your depressions no 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 jesus has something much better for you his own life he has written four four gospels in the scripture we can read about it we can think we can meditate on it and that is the greatest medicine that that the world can ever give greater than all the medicines any medicine you can come across in 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 any textbook in the world and we and i hope and pray today that this medicine will be ours that we would learn to use this medicine that we will learn to reach for the tree of life the leaves and the fruit even while we are on earth oh let's not wait till we go to heaven let's start eating it right on earth and be filled with that eternal life that will flow from the mind to the body and heal your body and go and flow out to others around you and make others cheerful in christ and and be a dissipator of life to people around you wherever you are let that be our prayer today thank you so much amen thank you uh dr sam for the wonderful message a healing message about how we can use what god has given already in nature and in other ways so that we can continue to be in the uh, process or in the state of healing because we always will get sick one way or the other and we look forward to hearing more from you and your team in the future dr sonia had to leave to give right to her husband so she'll be back later let us have the closing special by dr blessy sini an english song hope you'll be blessed by it who am i that the lord of all the earth would care to know my name would care to feel my heart who am i that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart not because of who i am but because of what you've done not because of what i've done but because of who you are i am a flower quickly fading here today and gone tomorrow a wave tossed in the ocean a wave for in the winds to you hear me when i'm calling let me catch me when i'm falling and you told me who Who am I 
gather eyes that see my sin Would look on me with love And watch me rise again Who am I that the voice of come to see Would call out through the rain And come the storm in me Not because of who I am but because of what you've done Not because of what I've done But because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow A wave tossed in the ocean A wave pouring the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you told me who I am I am yours Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, river in the wind. Let it catch me when I'm falling And it's told me who I am I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours That was a beautiful song by Dr. Blessy. The closing prayer will be offered by Mr. Xavier. Thank you for taking part. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's bow head. Let's, bow head. Let's pray. Our most gracious, loving, and living Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath you have given to us. Dear Lord, we pray for this. Um, we had a wonderful service through online, dear Lord, and also we pray for the, uh, we heard a wonderful message from the speaker, Mr. Sam, help us to take this, this words in our heart, to follow in our life, and also we pray for the members who will attend to this, these services through online and other ways. Please be with them, guide them, and protect them, and also give good health and wealth. Dear Lord, let us fill with your spirit. I ask in Jesus' precious name, Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining and taking part, especially the Lowry College team. We have been blessed by the message, music, and uh, other uh, sharing of uh, messages during the Sabbath school time. I would like to thank my own sister, Jyoti Christian, for arranging all of you to take part. Hope uh, that you will have a great uh, rest of the night over there, and uh, for us, it is still day. And uh, have a great weekend as well. So at this time, let us uh, meet and greet one another. May I have a word with uh, all the participants of today's program. At the outset, I want to thank Brother Leo from Lowry College, who has coordinated with various members of the Lowry team. Sincere thanks to him. I want to thank uh, Dr. Sam who has presented us that inspiring message, which was really something we needed. And Dr. Blessy, who had stepped in to help us out with the special song, and especially the Hope Side for giving us the opportunity to serve them. May you have a great weekend and a week ahead. God bless you all. 
on behalf of all the Lowry Adventist uh, College members, the team, I would like to thank the members for giving us the opportunity to worship with you. And it was a blessing listening to all of you and be in fellowship with one and all. Thank you. Wish you God's blessings. Amen. Thank you.